Hello. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm just going to give it a couple of more minutes for Facebook to do its usual notification to everybody and then we're going to get going. So just bear with me. I'm just going to try and connect my iPad so that I can read your guys comments whilst I am demoing. So just give me a second. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so how is everybody today? Are we all doing good? Are we all excited? Great. So welcome everybody. Welcome to our first Transformation Tuesday with myself. Um, for those of you that haven't met me, I'll give you a little bit of background information on me uh, and my experience. I've worked within the industry for around about 18 years now. The last, I'd probably say, eight years has been predominantly nails and beauty based, although I am qualified hairdresser as well. So I've been self-employed and I've also been employed. So I'm hoping really to give you guys lots of tips, lots of tricks that are gonna make your Plexi Gel experience that little bit easier. So originally when Sweet Squared came to me in terms of what content we were gonna give really in the next next few weeks, we were looking at a pre-recorded video for rebalance and removal, which honestly I've already filmed. But for me, I think that in terms of pre-recorded, it's just not the same as a live. It really isn't the same as a live. So for you guys, I think it's a really great opportunity to ask any questions that you may have. I am going to have my iPad at the side of me today, but I've also got our gorgeous Angie. Angie Sanderson is going to be in the chat. She's also seen the educator. So she's going to be asking some questions, uh, answering some of the questions. I will try and reply to what I can, but I am going to have my head in a light box for the majority of the time. So I'll try and get back to you when I can. And if it isn't during the live, then I will reply to you afterwards. OK, so today we're going to look at removal and we are going to look at rebalance as well. What I've tried to do is really tailor this around those of you that are natural nail techs. OK, so for those of you that maybe aren't experienced in things like rebalancing and removal, who are maybe a little bit scared to try Plexi Gel, I think this will be great for you guys. I think it'll be a, a real help. Um, if you haven't watched the previous live, I think it was around about two months ago. I did a live on application. I would recommend revisiting that. That is on the Sweet Squared page in the video section. Um, if you scroll down, I think it's around about two months ago. So definitely give that a watch. But today is going to be a rebalance and removal. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to switch you guys over. Um, so you'll just have to give me a couple of minutes to switch you over to my, my demo setup. And we're going to get started. Let's get straight into it. So bear with me a second. You might just be able to see a couple of bright lights just for a moment while I switch you around. There we go. And I am just going to turn off the comments on my phone, which I'm using to record. I'm just going to quickly pop them on onto my iPad. And like I said, guys, if and when I can respond, I will. Um, but I am going to have my head in the light box for some time. So I'm just going to bring my lamp around. And then let's get you zoomed in. So bear with me. Okay. So you will notice I am working on myself. So it's not the easiest task I've given myself here, but I think it's much better for you guys to see this on a real person um, than on something like a hand, you know, training hand. It's, it's just not the same when it comes to rebalance. You're also going to notice that I've already pre-prepared something for you guys, um, just so that you're not waiting around for a removal. So the first thing we're going to look at is a removal. OK, we're going to start with this nail here. When it comes to removal, the only time that you should be removing Plexi Gel is when a client wants to completely remove the coating. OK, if they come in, they want a change of colour. We're not going to remove that coating. OK, because to soak that nail right up for 20 minutes, it's probably going to do more harm than good in terms of rebalancing. OK, for those of you that are natural nail techs, it might sound a little bit scary doing a rebalance. But I promise you, once you get used to it, it's super, super easy. So we're going to start off with this nail. And you'll notice that I had absolutely no intention of removing this because I've gone pretty close, to be honest, to um, that proximal nail fold. So I'm just going to edge ever so slightly back before I get my file in there. And I'm just loosening that up just so I don't catch myself. 
You're probably going to notice my hands are incredibly dry. I am certainly an overwasher with COVID. Um, so you'll notice a lot of dry skin, probably going to be quite a lot of cuticle work for me to do as well on these rebalanced nails. But you know what? That's why we're doing this. It's a great opportunity for you guys to see things in real life. So I'm going to take a blizzard file. And it's completely up to you what file you use in terms of preference. We've got the blizzard file, we've got the hot shot, and we've got the shot board. You're going to be looking at a 100 to 180 grit on the pretty much the majority of the nail. However, I do like to drop down grit when I'm working around that natural nail. For me, I really want to protect the integrity of the natural nail, so I will drop down in that area. The majority of your product is going to be focused in the centralised spine of an enhancement, whether it's a natural nail overlay or whether or not that is an enhancement using Builder. Okay, so you'll notice I'm taking down a lot of the product here and I'm first of all removing the colour coating. Whenever we do a removal with Plexi Gel, it's not just going to be a case of wrapping it up, getting it off. Okay, we've got to debulk this enhancement. So we're looking at removing around about 95% of that coating we've got to break right through that top coat right through to the color and 95% of that enhancement product should be gone okay the great thing about plexi gel being clear is we can always keep an eye on the integrity of the natural nail of our client so we can make sure that everything's good underneath everything's healthy and there's really no need to remove it unless like I say you want to completely remove that enhancement. So I am going to switch files and you're probably going to be a little bit shocked by the file I'm going to use. It's a Kanga file. So your Kanga file is predominantly used for shaping of the natural nail. However, it is so slim. Okay, so for when you're getting into these kind of really small areas where you're getting a little bit closer to that natural nail, a little bit closer to living tissue, it's a really great file to use because it's a 240 grit. Okay, so you'll notice I'm just turning the finger to the side and I do this with my client as well. So I've got a really good view and I'm not cut, cutting into that natural nail at all because there's going to be a lot less product around these edges. Okay, so again, I'm just removing as much as I can without filing onto that natural nail. Another thing to note, which you probably noticed I haven't done, is we're going to reduce the length as well. Now, I would personally do that at the start. On this nail, I'm not going to do that. Um, but it really is going to depend on what your client's nails like underneath. If the client that is having a removal has maybe spent the last three months growing her natural nails, and then you know they've they've got a fair length on them, and you take them really short, she's going to be pretty furious. You know, she spent all that time growing them. So for me, I would always say to my client, "What kind of length do you want them taking down to, or do we simply want the plexi gel removing?" Okay, so that is probably as much colour as I'm going to remove. And then I'm just going to switch over to thinning this out a little bit more. So again, remember, we're looking for 95% of removal of that plexi gel. So we're really just thinning that product right, right out. It's always a good idea to brush off any of the excess dust so we can get a clear view of that natural nail make sure that we're not filing through so so important there's two things that are going to damage a natural nail okay two things that we can control that's going to be application and that is going to be removal if your client's nail is damaged it could be down to one of those we don't want to be using any mechanical instruments or anything like a you know curette or a cuticle push to remove plexi gel we want to be using a virtual stick and a light a lightly lightly grit file okay so at this point, we've removed around about 95% of that coating, okay? So does that look thin enough to you guys? Is that what you would usually do? Thin that right down, okay? So then, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap for removal. So I've already prepared one so that you guys don't have to wait for me to remove this. I'm hoping it's going to be ready. I only popped it on five minutes before the live started, I'll be honest with you. Time got carried away with me. So we're going to be using the C&D for remover apps. And the reason that we use these is it's targeted. Okay. Gone are the days of soaking in a bowl of acetone, uh, you know, using vast, vast amounts of, of product. It really, really can be quite simple if you make it simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to saturate this area. And it really does need to be completely saturated. What you should be able to see is almost like a little tiny glue dot in the back. 
and that means it's thoroughly saturated. If you are using a mender pump, which I do use, I love these little pump tops and I'd say you'll get approximately enough product using three pumps if it's the C&D mender pumps. I literally just put mine straight into my, my C&D bottle because my clients like to see things branded. They know I'm using the full system. We're going to use Awfully Fast Moisturising Remover because it's got all of those ingredients in that are going to counteract the dehydrating effects of the acetone. Okay, So we're looking at two to three pumps straight into here. Okay. We then place that underneath the natural nail, okay? The fold towards us. We're going to flip that up, and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit for you guys here. We're going to flip that up, and it, I'm going to be honest, it's not easy doing this on yourself. And we're going to flip that over, okay? It might seem like a really small thing, we're just going to slap dash wrap it up, but it makes a massive difference. We've got an acronym that we use, and it's SIT, okay? So we're going to saturate it. It's going to be in place and it's going to be tight. So we're going to fold this and we're going to get this wrap as tight as it can be. Okay, we're going to wrap the short end first and I'm going to give that a really, really good pull on the other side. We get that nice and tight and we're going to wrap that up. The thing is with any solvents or any removers, the solvents can evaporate and they'll evaporate incredibly quickly. So if you've got a big gap here, it's going to evaporate, which means it's going to dry up. So you'll take that remover wrap off and you'll think, you know what, it's not budged, but it should have, okay? Let me have a little check of the time. What are we on now? Quarter past. So I apply this at five to, we would say 20 minutes, but let's see what's happening under here. So I'm going to zoom you back in again, so bear with me. And what I like to do usually is, and you'll probably notice it's starting to look a little bit scruffy, is give it a really, really, really good squeeze and a little massage in between. So we'll wrap all 10 fingers, We'll set our timer for 20 minutes and then we'll go back to the first one. Another thing to bear in mind as well when we're working with Plexi Gel is don't be tempted to take off the remover wraps all at the same time. We're going to take one wrap off, we're then going to remove the product and we'll move on to the next nail. Okay? If you take them all off at the same time, there's a really good chance that the product is going to reharden. So let's see what we've got under here. It's had probably around about 19 minutes. What we should have is a few little flakes that are left. Birch would stick in the direction of nail growth. You see how I'm using very, very, very little pressure here, guys. What we shouldn't be doing is taking a metal tool and really etching this product off. It's going to damage the nail. You can probably already see that my nails, it's quite damaged. Um, I <laughs> trapped this one the other day. Well, I said the other day, the other week and it really hurt it broke quite low so i used rescue rx for a few days before thinking Do you know what i'm gonna get an overlay on this just to give it a little bit of protection i've then just taken a little bit of awfully fast on a lymph free wipe and i'm just giving that really really good rub again see how we're not using those metal tools to remove so what i'm doing now is just giving it a little rub and these these hands down pads that we use work almost like an exfoliant and what that should do is remove any excess. So you can see there's a tiny little bit left on there and give that a really, really, really good rub. Again, you'll notice I'm not leaving it very long. If you leave it too long, it's going to reharden. So I'm just going to take my birchwood stick. And again, I don't know if I'm slightly out of shot for you guys. I'm just going to come out. I'm just going to knock that excess off. This shouldn't be an uncomfortable painful experience for your client it should be comfortable pleasant cause absolutely no pain if it's causing pain you've not soaked it for long enough don't be afraid to resaturate your wrap and reapply it okay so i'd say we've got the majority of the product off there i'm just going to see if there's just a tiny little bit you can use your line of light so the way that the light's bouncing off of the nail sometimes even with the removal to check that you've got all of the remaining product off so you can just see there's a little bit coming off here, tiny little bit in the edges, but it shouldn't look difficult. If it looks difficult, wrap it for longer. You know, don't be afraid to say to your client, do you know what? It's not quite ready. Okay, so this point for me personally, when I'm doing a removal, 
I would ask my client if they want me to tidy up the length. Again, we'd use the Kanga file. I'm not going to do that because, like I said, this was a very, very short nail anyway. Um, it's a little bit sensitive, but, you know, it is what it is. It's my own fault for being too heavy-handed. I would then ask my client to wash the hands. Obviously, we've removed all 10 nail, all 10 um, enhancements. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of solar oil and rub, rub that in. The last thing that I'd want to do for my clients is just remove the product and send the clients on the way. You've got the option to do cuticle work, if you wish, if you've costed that in as a time. Um, but it's completely up to you guys what you want to do in a removal. I always like my clients' nails to look as tidy and healthy when they leave as possible, especially when we've removed an enhancement. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this off. And I have a little change of setting. Let's get rid of all of that dust. And then we're going to have a look at our rebalance. So this is the good stuff, guys. This is probably what you're here for. Um, for some people, removal is just going to be same old, same old. But rebalance is why we're here. Okay, so we've got two nails here. We're going to be working on these two. You can see again, I've been a little bit heavy handed. Got a couple of scuffs on these. I've got a six month old puppy. I am incredibly heavy handed. Um, I'm my own worst client. I really am. We've got this nail here, which is Shaper. This has been sculpted onto a form, okay? And when I sculpted this, I've actually not done any finished filing. I've let the Shaper do all of the work, okay? Correct product placement is gonna save you a lot of time. A lot, lot of time. So if you can really get this down to a fine art, you can save so much time in your services, okay? We've then got this one, which is Builder, okay? So this slightly longer nail. You can see here, that that structure, so we're looking at a slight dome shape, which should be around about 50% of the way through the enhancement, depending on the length, has really grown out. So we've almost got that dome in slightly further along now. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm hoping you can. Give me a little yes if you can see it. Oh, I've lost your comments. Okay, so let's start off with the shaper. So we're going to rebalance our shaper. So like I said, those of you that are natural nail techs, please don't be scared of this, okay? It's really not as difficult as you think it is, but I'm really hoping that these little tips will give you some confidence so that you can go away and, and do this and feel confident with your client. I know a lot of you have purchased the product, but you've maybe only done one set of, of plexi gel before we've got locked down again. So it'll give you a good refresher as well. So the first thing that we want to do when we're doing a rebalance is we're going to remove the coating. Okay, we're going to remove the colour. I want to see what's going on underneath. I want to check that the client's nail is healthy. And then we're going to take it from there. Okay, so I'm going to take again my blizzard file. I, I love a blizzard file. Um, it really is personal preference. We want to be using... Oh, sorry, I've switched you guys round. I want to be using a 100 180 grit for this. And again, I'm just going to take away that colour. So I'm just going really, really lightly. And you'll see I'm just leaving that little bit of colour around the natural nail. So I'm not going to lie guys, I usually don't work in the light box because it's usually daylight, but it's hard working in here. Again, we're just going to break down all of that colour, move to the opposite side. You know, I'll probably make it look a little bit harder because I'm working on myself again. But it is what it is, you needed a live model for today I think. I'm going to come down this side and what I'm making sure when I'm coming down the sides I'm not tucking my file under if you tuck your file under what you're actually going to do is potentially take away some of your um, clients lower arch and you're also going to cut into the natural nails so I'm working with that centralized spine of the file right up and just rocking that ever so slightly across okay again I'm leaving that tiny tiny bit of color all around the perimeter so let's get rid of this colour and then we'll see what's going on underneath. I'm hoping there's not a lot of lifting. To be honest with you guys, I don't really seem to experience a lot of lifting with Plexi Gel. If you're having lifting issues, it could be down to a couple of things. The first thing I'd always look at and address is your prep. Okay, We want to be performing a manicure. 
We want to be removing surface shine. We want to be eliminating surface contaminants and purifying nail plate layers. So what that means in a nutshell is a really good thorough dry pep. Okay. We want to be making sure there's absolutely no cuticle. Absolutely none. We want to remove the shine really gently from that natural nail. And then we want to use our scrub fresh as scrub fresh, not tickle fresh. Okay, so really thorough good scrub for around about five seconds, getting right into those lateral folds and really thoroughly cleansing that natural nail. So I've just swapped again to my Kanga file. You'll notice I'll do this with the nails that I'm doing tonight. It is my personal preference. If you like something that's a little bit more padded, you can use a koala buffer, but I like the slimness of a Kanga file. I like that I can get into those tricky areas I'm not compromising that natural nail. And again, I'm just going to rock that over really gently. You'll notice how my speed changes when I'm around that natural nail as well. So just working really, really carefully. Okay, so when we've got the majority of the colour off, the next thing we're going to think about is the client's length. Okay, do they want to keep the length? Do they want to lose the length? Has that nail grown so much that their natural nail is underneath? Okay. But a few things that really I would take into consideration at this point is what can you see? Can you see any lifting? Can you see any cracks? Any chips? This is when we're going to determine if we are going to rebalance or remove. Okay. If we've got a real crack coming across the side, we're going to remove it. We're not going to rebalance it. Okay. If we've got a whole heap of pocket lifting in the centre, we're going to remove it, we're not going to rebalance it. Because spending all of that time filing back that product is wasting time for you, okay? So it's really important to evaluate the nail and think, right, okay, the other nine are fantastic, this one's not so good, I'm going to wrap this to remove first of all, and then we'll rebalance the other nails. By the time you rebalance them and you come back to that nail, it's going to be good to go, okay? So, the next thing we want to think about is at length. So the client said, you know what, I'd like them a little bit shorter, they've grown quite a bit, they're not, they're not that manageable for me. Let me just zoom out because I think you guys have lost me. So we're taking down that length, and as we take down length with a rebalance, it's going to get chunky. Can you see that? How it's got quite thick on the tip. So what we need to do is make sure that we're looking at the structure. So again, we're tipping the finger over and we can now see that that apex, which was around about halfway, has shifted along as the natural nail has grown. OK, so what we need to do is rebalance. So you might call it an infill, a backfill, maintenance, rebalance. There's so many different names and some have a different purpose, some don't. But what we want to do is rebalance this enhancement so it's structurally sound. OK, so the main thing we want to do is we want to bevel and slim this tip that's now looking a little bit on the chunky side. And here, towards that proximal nail fold, your appendicium, we want to add product into that area. OK, we want to give it its balance back. OK, so let's do our prep. So we're going to start off with a dry prep. And we're just going to gently work our way along. Obviously, we've already washed the client's hand, we've applied our cool blue, all of our PPEs on, but I'm working on myself. I have washed my hands and I have used cool blue, just in case anybody's worried about that. We're then going to switch over to our pushy side. So for me, when I'm working with a pushy, I want to make sure that I get right down those lateral folds, because you never really know what's hiding down here. So we're going to work our way all, all the way across. And again... I've actually not got as much as I thought. I have been using my cuticle eraser. I must admit, these hands are so dry. Work our way around. And removing absolutely anything that may be there. I'm then going to switch over to a curette. Now, curettes are optional. I don't know how many of you use a curette. I'd be really interested to know in the comments how many people use a curette because I love a curette. It's almost like a little scoop. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But it's really great for getting any non-living tissue and really kind of scooping into the sidewalls, the lateral folds, getting absolutely anything remaining out. You've really got to use it in quite an uncomfortable way, I'll be honest. You know, when I'm working to the left-hand side, it's, it's fine. But to work to the right, I've got to tuck my elbow right into my side. 
and almost change my hand position. So those of you that have never used one of these before, I'll be honest, they're not the most comfortable thing, but they really make a huge, huge difference. So we're just almost rocking that, that area around the perimeter. You guys will probably be able to see now that I've zoomed out, I'm not in the most comfortable position. We've then got the opposite side, which is almost like a tiny chisel. So we're just going to again work around here. This is great for anything that we've missed. If there's any kind of hangnails that are waving at you that your client can nibble with their teeth that are non-living, absolutely nip those off. I'm not a huge fan of nipping more than required. Um, be honest with you, if, if it's waving at me, I'll nip it. If it's not, I'll leave it. I'll recommend my clients to use cuticle eraser, which is an alpha hydroxy acid based product. So it's going to gently exfoliate. While we're on the subject, I'll give you a little peek. And you can see how much of this I've used because it's just such a great, great product. So at this point, I'm quite happy with that cuticle removal. So all of that non-living tissue has been removed from the nail plate. I've cleaned my working area. So we've performed our manicure and now we need to remove surface shine. Okay, so we're going to use a koala buffer on the 240 grit side. And all I really need to remove the shine from is the area that has grown. Okay, so for the people that think rebalances damage nails, they absolutely do not. Okay, all we're doing is removing shine from the new growth, nowhere else. So in terms of what it's like for the natural nail, it's much better to do this than it is to remove, reapply, remove, reapply, remove, reapply. This is much, much kinder. So we're just going to take the end of this and I'm, I'm almost holding it like a pen. And I'm just going to rock my way around that cuticle line. Okay, it shouldn't be super abrasive. We're going to come down the lateral folds. Really gently in the direction of nail growth and then the opposite side. So really, really gentle and working our way around. Okay, so our next step in our prep is we are going to eliminate surface contaminants and purify nail plate layers with our scrub fresh. Okay, so like I said before, this is scrub fresh, not tickle fresh. For those of you that think you can just literally wipe this over the nail and it's going to work, it doesn't work like that. Okay, we've got to use this product correctly and we've got to really work this into the surface of the nail. Okay, removing absolutely any pathogens, any contaminants that are on that nail surface. So I like to do around about five seconds and completely scrub that area. I promise you, if you guys perfect your prep, everything else is going to fall into place. Okay, it makes your life so, so much easier. So we've done that. Okay, next step is going to be our bonder and our shaper. So our first product is going to be our bonder. So bonder is our bonding agent. We cannot apply plexi without bonder. Okay, this is probably one of the most important steps along with your prep because without this, it's just going to lift off. Okay, with bonder, we're going to give the bottle a gentle roll. There's no need to shake this. Okay, so just a gentle roll is enough. Just going to take one of these sheets away and get rid of all of that dust. I love a, a clean working area. So, moving on to our bonder. The bonder only needs to be applied to the actual natural nail. Okay, so we've done all of our prep. We're going to drain off our brush. So we've got just enough product to bond that area. So anywhere that we can see natural nail, we're going to apply that. Okay. If you do have lifting, we want to remove that lifting. Okay. I'm hoping on the next nail, I might have just a little bit for you. Um, but Plexi works really, really well. So for me, I tend not to have much lifting, but let's be hopeful. So then we're going to have our shaper. So remember, we've got our bonder that's going into the CD LED lamp and that's going to go in for 10 seconds. OK, that's it. 10 seconds. We're then going to take our shaper and we're not going to shake this. So for those of you that are experiencing bubbles when using your plexi gel, 
you do not need to shake it. Shaking is going to incorporate air bubbles into that mixture. So when we've done our rebalance, we've removed the colour and we've debulked the enhancement. Okay, so you'll see it's a little bit thinner than it was previously. You're looking at around about 85%, but this is a really thin overlay, if I'm being perfectly honest. There's not a lot of product on there anyway. Um, it didn't need much because we're not adding a lot of length. So we're going to take our shaper. I'm going to drain off some of the product off of the brush. I'm going to paint this over the entire surface, okay, because I know I've thinned it out. So I'm just teasing that up and back. And for those of you that are maybe just joining us and you haven't watched one of the Plexi Gel Lives, like I said at the start, get yourself onto the Sweet Squared um, Facebook page in the video section. And we did a live around about two months ago, which was application. And it'll be really valuable for you. So we've applied that. But remember, we've not changed the structure. So we need some product in zone three, which is up here. So we've got zone one, extension edge, zone two, which is your apex, and zone three, which is going to be around that cuticle line. So I'm taking a little bit more product. And what I'm going to do this time is take that product and float it. Okay, so I'm just really lightly gliding that product around. And just know I've not cured that first layer. If you're not comfortable floating the product on so much, what I'd recommend is to work in two thinner layers. And can you see how I'm really not agitating the product very much? If you agitate, you're going to get bubbles. Okay, so when we're looking at that from the side now, that apex is located slightly further back. We've got a much softer transition throughout the shape of the nail. But I'm just going to add just a fraction more into that area. And because this is just an overlay, there's not very much. So what you guys will probably see, I'm just going to see if I can turn it sideways without losing what I'm doing. I'm just really lightly tailing that product ever so slightly forwards. For those of you that are liquid and powder techs, lightning touch. Um, when I started doing gel and I was really very much used to working with liquid and powder, I just stuck my brush straight on in there and I expected it to work, but you've got to work with the brush almost parallel to the nail. Really, really light touch. You're almost tickling the surface. If you've got gel on the brush, it'll almost magnetise to the gel on the product, so you can move it around really easily. So you can see there now, we've got a much better structure. I'm going to pop that into the lamp. Before I cure it, something I just want to mention. So this is the base of my lamp. I'm just going to zoom out. And we've got a custom cure area between these two points, so these thumb holes that are in the CD LED lamp. If your client has got a really thin weak nail, they've got an incredibly high C curve, or they do experience some kind of heat spikes and exothermic reaction, place the nail in for two to three flashes. I personally find two is enough. And this is gonna slow down the chemical reaction that creates that heat spike, that exothermic reaction, okay? You're gonna do that first, and then you can pop that on for a full cure. So we're almost locking the product in place. But we're also making it a lot more comfortable for the client, okay? Not every client's going to need that, but I personally think with Plexi Gel, it really does need to have that custom cure. I do not want my clients to feel any discomfort whatsoever. It makes it a really unpleasant service. Um, and not, like I said, not everybody's going to get this, but we've got to slow down the reaction, okay? So that's just in now. That's on button number 2B, and that is in for 60 seconds, Okay. So when this nail comes out the lamp, we're going to have a little look and think what we think about the structure. If we're really happy with it, why do we need to refine it? We could go straight and with shellac, okay? If it could still do with a little bit of work, maybe the product slipped while I've had it turned sideways, you know, showing you guys what it looks like from the side view, then we can do a little bit of filing, but we're going to have a little look at it first of all, and then we'll decide. So whenever we're working with freshly applied products, we want to be using the 180 grit side of the file, okay? We don't want to be using the 100 grit side. So let's take a little look. So we're going to look down the barrel of the nail. Still looking a little bit chunky to me. I like quite a slim, a slim enhancement. From the side, apex looks fairly well placed. 
take a little look down the barrel this way looks fairly balanced so I think what we'll do is we'll remove the inhibition layer I'm gonna give it a slight refine I am a little bit of a perfectionist I'm afraid so I'm just gonna use a little bit of disperse so that's our isopropyl alcohol in the UK and I'm just gonna again use one of these hands down pads they're great because they protect your skin with a plastic backing so it just means that we're not getting any uncured product on our cells Okay, so I'm going to take the 180 degree side of my file and I'm just going to come in the sides. Again, that spine is completely straight. If we took under, we're going to cut into the natural nail, we're going to cut into the lower arch. So straight up, I flip to the opposite side. I really hate a wide nail. We're just going to shape around the perimeter. Okay, and I'm just going to zoom out. I'm going to turn to the side and I'm just going to work up what I like to call the hips of the enhancement. Because this is what's going to give you that additional width where it looks like an enhancement. You've always got those two kinds of clients. You've got the ones who like it to look super, super natural. And you've got the ones who like them to look like enhancements. They're really long and, you know, coffin shaped. Um, but for those clients that like a really natural looking enhancement, slimming down an enhancement is absolutely key. Sorry, I've got a bit of my jumper fluff stuck in my file and it's driving me crazy. Okay, so then we're going to start to work around that cuticle line. So I'm going to take my Kanga file again. I told you I'd be using this because it's super slim. And I'm just going to get right in there. Whenever we're working with Plexigel, it's really important to leave that tiny little free margin, just like you would with Cindy Shellac. Again, I'm just making sure I've got it nice and thin. What we don't want to experience is that almost like bump here, where the client can get their fingers right into the back, because what they're going to do is they're going to pick it. We all have clients like that, all of us. So now I'm just working up the sides, having a little stop every now and then, just checking on my structure. Like I said, this one doesn't need a lot of work, but we'll probably find with the builder nail that it will. I'm just going to bevel down this nail because it, to me it looks really, really chunky. So by doing this, we're just going to slim down that extension edge. So from the side, my angle of my file is coming down here. Okay, so it's just almost skimming over the edge. Slimming everything down. And the last area we're going to address is that apex area. This is actually naturally a really hooked nail. I wish I could have seen, shown you guys this before. You'll see it next week if you join us. It's a really hooked nail. We're going to slim that right in. Okay, so how does that look to everybody? Does it need more work? We can't be quite happy with that. I think we're okay to go for colour. Okay, so again, I'm just going to give it a little dust off. But before we add colour, I'm going to move on to this next nail. Okay, so with this one, originally I used Builder and I use a tip. Um, I Most of my students will know I don't really like tips. Um, I just don't. There's always a time and a place for them. They're great for clients that have got really beaten down nails. You can't get a form on them. But for me personally, I love a form. I love forms. I used to hate forms. They used to absolutely terrify me. But it's just practice. So if you're feeling that way... You're not on your own. We've all been there. Just practice, practice, practice. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is debulk. We're going to remove around about 85% of the product and we're going to remove that colour coating. Okay. So let's get started with that. Again, quite happy to go in with a high grit here, providing we're not going near that natural nail. The great thing about a rebalances, and I know some of you that are quite experienced with rebalances, all the hard work's been done for you. All of the hard work's been done, you've already got that base, all we need to do is refine the structure. So I'm just taking away that colour. I always like to work around the perimeter first of all. And again, you'll have to bear with me with some funny positions I'm getting into working on myself. When you're right-handed, getting around that 
left hand side of the nail is always a little bit tricky. We're just working our way through. If in doubt, take a break, dust it off, have a little look. Okay. If you are e file trained, fantastic. Um, I'm e file trained and it really changed a lot of things for me. Personally, I prefer to use an e file, but I know a lot of you that are maybe natural nail techs will be absolutely terrified of an e file. But again, an e file is only as good as the hands that are using it. So if you're correctly trained, e files are fantastic. Um, you know, you will have clients that are maybe scared of e-files but it's up to you as their nail technician to give them the confidence in not only you but also the e-file so you can introduce them to it really gradually maybe just use it to start with to take off the color coating and then hand file the rest of it and it's completely up to you it isn't essential to be e-file trained to use plexigel it's really not it is probably one of the easiest products to file through super super soft to get through but incredibly strong so here again i'm just working around that perimeter I'm going to straighten up that lower arch while I'm there. And we're going to move to the opposite side. Again, I've just got a little bit of remaining colour. And then we're going to work around that top section. Just going to drop down grit wise. Again, because I'm getting nearer that natural nail. To get a little bit closer again I'm just going to switch back to my Kanga file. My mind was blown when I was told that I could use a Kanga file for this, absolutely blown. Just something I suppose I've never thought of but it is a really really great tip. Okay so taking off a lot of the colour but we're going to now debulk. So we can see here the apex is sitting around about here we need it a little bit further that way, okay? For correct strength and structure, I am gonna take a little bit of length off. I'm just gonna reshape that extension edge. And what you'll notice is, I'm not filing any higher up into the side walls than the tip of the finger. Because what we want when we're working with an enhancement is a really strong lower arch. So you can see if I hold my file here, that perfectly straight line here. That is the absolute key to success with enhancements. If we take that away, and you see a lot of people who round it up around about here, you're gonna lose your structure. So when that client knocks that nail, it's gonna split straight across, okay? So it doesn't matter how much product's on there, you're still gonna get a break in that area, okay? So we're gonna work our way around, making sure on both sides, we've got that nice strong lower arch. And then we're going to start to debulk. So we're taking around 85% of the products away. And we can give it a correct, proper placement as it should be. I'm sorry if that's making you guys feel a little bit dizzy. It always does whenever anybody else is filing for me. So what you might experience if you get some lifting, it will almost change colour. Okay, so you might see it kind of changing colour around this area. It might look a little bit cloudy. And as you start to file, it might start to chip away. Okay, so say for example, I am about to draw my nail with a, a marker. Say for example, we've got that cloudy area around about here. Okay, and because I've got no lifting, this is, this is what I'm having to do. It's such a great product, I've got no lifting. So let's say we've got a big pocket of lifting here. It's gone cloudy. The rest of the nail looks great, but we've got that one cloudy area. What we don't need to do is file right up here, okay? We actually want to file on this area here, okay? And what you'll find is it will just literally chip away. So that's going to mean that we're not actually filing the natural nail at all. We're just filing the actual product, okay? We don't come anywhere near that natural nail. So we would file all the way along here, and it takes a little bit of time. And again, 
you know what I'm like. I like to use a Kanga file. I like to use a Koala buffer. I don't want to go in with a really, really strong grit. And eventually that pink area would just chip off. Okay, but like I said, if you've got pockets of liftings, you can maybe see a cloudy area here. They've got a little bit of greeny, or maybe it's kind of starting to peel away from the tip. There's a reason for that. There's a reason that that's happened. And it's up to us to determine that. So say, for example, around, around about that um, proximal nail fold, cuticle line, lateral folds, around that area we've got lifting. Okay, it's incredibly likely that you've either not prepped correctly or... You've got product on skin that's created a barrier. So if you get product all over the client's skin, it's not going to attach like it does to a nail. That's not what it's designed to do. Okay. So I would always say reassess your application, reassess your preparation and take a look from that. If we've got product po kind of pocket lifting. I would say we've maybe not removed surface shine or maybe somebody's maybe one of our clients is suffering from something like hyperhidrosis. You know, they've maybe got um, excessive oily skin and that's then transferred onto the nail so at that point we could use uh, something like a pep booster like nail fresh would be great for that but again go back to your preparation think do you know what did i scrub fresh that nail as well as i could have done okay so you're looking at around about five seconds per nail and that that's not coming off <laughs> isn't that pink so i'm just gonna file it off because that's my option right now really gently i'm not on that natural nail so we're okay so at this point we are then going to do our prep. So we've debulked, we have removed any lifting, we've assessed the nail, we've thought, right, okay, we're happy with this, there's no need to remove it, we can go straight on. So again, prep. I'm going to fly through this because you guys have seen me do this once already. And I'm hoping there's not a lot. One thing that I will honestly say is if your clients have been following their home care, you'll have a lot less work to do. Using the solar oil is going to keep the product really pliable. It's going to reduce how much lifting you have because when that client bangs that nail, it's going to flex with the coating. Okay, you're going to have a lot less cuticle work to do. Be much much easier. I can tell I've been using cuticle razor because this for me is ten times easier than it usually is. Okay, I'm going to go around with my curette just in case there's anything that I qu can't quite see. Because there's always something lurking down these lateral folds, always. Just spin that finger around. Just see if there's a little bit in there that we can remove. And like I said, if there's anything that's waving at you, anything the client can nibble with the teeth, you've got the option of your nippers or cuticle scissors if that's what you use. Okay, so then we're going to go back in with in fact no we're not we need to remove shine i like so then we're going to go in and remove our shine so again we're going back to our koala buffer really gently this shouldn't sound really abrasive if it sounds like this it's too much okay so really gently just around that cuticle line down the lateral folds anywhere that you've removed any lifting any natural nail exposed that is what we're going to want to remove shine from Okay, then we're going to go in with our scrub fresh. Okay. Completely saturate that pad and give that nail a really, really, really good scrub. I like to get right into those lateral folds. If it's a natural nail that you're working on, right under that, that free edge as well. Okay, so our next step is moving on to our bonder. So the exact same process as Shaper. Nothing changes through your preparation, apart from maybe we've got a little bit more structural work to do when it comes to builder. And we're just going to apply that to our natural nail. Again, we're just leaving that tiny, tiny little gap. So anywhere we've got a little bit of natural nail exposed. Just got a little bit too much product. I'm just going to drain off my brush and just... Bring that down. Okay, and remember with your bonder, we're going to give that a light roll, not a shake. So then we're going to move on to our builder. So let me just take that while it's curing. So that's gone into the lamp. 
for one minute on button 2B. Remember that you've got your, oh it hasn't, it's gone in for 10 seconds on number one. Remember that when we move on to Builder, that custom cure. If you've missed that, um, make sure that you maybe watch this back afterwards. And we've just got a short section on custom cure, what it means and why and when to use it. Okay, so that's out the lamp. We're going to move on to our builder. So this is probably one of my favourite products. The viscosity of this gel is just perfect for building an enhancement. And I'm just going to drain off my brush. Now this is a brand new bottle because I've absolutely drained my other one. So there's quite a lot of product on here. Let me just drain off the neck of that bottle a little bit more. So I'm going to come over the enhancement. Again, I'm leaving that tiny, tiny gap. So the amount of product you're going to need for a rebalance versus the amount of product you're going to need for a full new set are completely different. So if you can keep your clients coming back for a rebalance, not only is it going to take you less time, you can use less product. So I've just applied a thin layer to the entire nail. I like to do this. Um, I just feel like I've got everywhere coated and then I'm going to pick up a little bit more product. Okay, again, if you're not quite as comfortable or the client's got quite a thin, weak nail, you can work in two layers to do this, okay? So I'm taking a little bit more product. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work down the nail in almost that floating motion that we did with the shaper. And remember, with builder and shaper, there's absolutely no need to shake. If we shake, we're going to incorporate air bubbles. If you over whip the product on the nail, we're kind of being quite sloppy. Again, you can incorporate air bubbles. So really slow and steady. I'm going to turn to the side so that you can see. Hopefully it'll stay where I put it for a second. And we're just going to tail this product on. Let me just check if you've got a good view. In here. So the majority of your product wants to be down the centralised spine. So down the centre of the nail. And we're just going to tease that around. And remember... Sometimes it's really hard with a clear product to see where the product is. You've got your line of light, so you can see the way that the light's bouncing off the sail. It really helps you to see where you need more product. So we're looking from the side, looking fairly good. We're going to have a little look down the barrel from the opposite side. Need a little bit more product just on this side here. And again, you can just see how a small, small amount of product that I'm using. This product levels out so incredibly well. You don't need absolutely heaps of it, but you do need enough for structure. So that's the key thing here. We're looking at the structure of the nail to give it that strength. So again, I'm just tailing that product down. And I'm just going to pop that hand upside down. Instead of making it really difficult for ourselves, PlexiGel self-levels beautifully. So it's actually really great to let gravity do its thing. So I've just got it upside down for a couple of seconds. Check I'm happy with the structure. Perfect. Get that in. So remember, if you've got that client with a thin, weak nail, you've got the option of the custom cure. So you're going to custom cure button number one with a hand in between the thumb indentations for two to three flashes. OK, you then you've got the option of going on, finishing off the other, other four fingers on the hand and then giving them a full cure. The full cure is a really important factor here. OK. Two to three flashes is not enough for a full cure. Okay, so we've got to make sure that we do a, a full cure after we've done a partial cure. So I've got that hand in there now. I did my first two to three flashes. Then I've moved on with my builder and I've got it in there for a full cure on button 2B for 60 seconds. Okay, so then we're going to take a little look at the actual structure of the nail. If we need to do any refinement, if we need to finish file, then we can. And then we're going to quickly finish these enhancements off. I am aware that I can talk for absolute England, so I don't want to keep you guys too long this evening. I appreciate that you've all given up um, probably what's quite an important time in some households. You know, it's tea time, getting the kids ready for bed, that kind of thing. So if you have missed any of this and you absolutely can revisit it, it will be saved. So let's have a little look at this enhancement. Got a little bit of bulk on the tip. Definitely want to remove that. And we've got a slight peak towards the end. So I am going to finish file. I'm going to take a little bit of Disperse, so that's our isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just going to wipe that away. You'll notice when I'm using IPA or Disperse, I'm not getting it all over the client's skin. 
you know, I'm not rubbing it all over the finger. That is uncured product, okay? So the way that I treat that product is like it's contaminated. So I don't like to touch it on my skin or my client's skin, okay? It just really reduces the risk of any overexposure and any reactions down the line. So we're going to go back to our 180 grit and we're going to refine. I'm just going to switch files because we've got a lot of pink left over. And I'm going to switch over to the black grit, okay? So I'm going to start off with my side walls. I'm just going to straighten those up, okay? I'm going to work on the hips. I'm just going to straighten up that lower arch. Move to the opposite side and again I'm going to straighten up that lower arch. So working all the way through the hips of the enhancement. And if you guys feel like you need a little bit more guidance on finished filing, Fee Wallace is doing a, oh, it's a live. It's one of the Fridays. I can't remember exactly which one, but she's doing a finished filing like workshop, which will be amazing for you guys. I'm not sure which product she's using, but finished filing is the same no matter what enhancement system you're using. Okay, so definitely check that out. I'm then going to go around that cuticle line. Again, you guessed it, I'm going to use my Kanga file. So I'm just working around, making sure I've got that ultra thin seal. I don't want my client to be able to get the fingers behind that, the nails behind it, and pick because they will pick. Or well, at least my clients used to pick. And then we're gonna work and bevel down the nails. So I've got a little bit more bulk here than I actually want. Sorry if this is making you guys feel a little bit dizzy. work around till I'm happy with that and then we're just going to work across that apex. Take a little look from the side. Okay, so when we're happy, we give that a little light we disperse. I'm going to get all of that dust off of my hands. Okay, and then I'm just going to think, right, okay, am I happy with that? See, I picked where I want it. Is the thin ended up thin and tapered as much as I'd like? No, it's not. If you guys struggle with the visual, a really great way is sometimes to close your eyes and feel the nail. It might feel a little bit crazy, but I think it's a really, really great way just to determine if you're happy with the structure. I'm, I like to feel nails. Um, that's probably why I've not got gloves on, but I do like to feel the nail and check I'm happy with everything. Again, just look down there, a little bit of width on that side. I'm just gonna take that in ever so slightly. So at this stage, it's important to know what our client wants okay do they want color do they want a clay coating do they want nail art what is it that they want okay so for me what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm just gonna finish one of these nails off with a uh, plex gel shaper I'm gonna finish one of these nails off with a little bit of color because these nails are gonna probably come off tonight because we've got something really exciting for you next Tuesday so we're going to be doing a little bit more of an extreme enhancement, not too extreme. We don't want to push Plexi Gel too far to its limits, but we are going to incorporate in some nail art as well. So if you want to see a bit more of a transformation, I'd definitely say tune in next Tuesday. So for the one that we're leaving clear, we're going to go straight in with our protected top coat. This is the one that needs, that, again, a gentle roll. Okay, so a gentle roll between the hands is enough. We don't want to agitate this, okay? I didn't think any clients would want a clay coating. I was quite pleasantly surprised, actually, how many clients did want a clay coating. Um, I know that I've worn a clay coating during lockdown, but it's a really great alternative for clients that maybe want to change the colour of their nails. So, let me seal that. Let's get that shape, uh, that protector top coat on there. You can see underneath that, I've got, I've got quite a bit of 
quite damaged nails at the moment. I did leave um, my coatings off for a little while and my nails are so much better coated. I don't know about yours, but I, I just need something on there for strength. So I've popped that in on button number three for 60 seconds. And then we're going to move on to colour. So I'm probably going to use, I'm fancying something quite deep and rich. So I'm going to use Spike. I've not used this for a while. Well, gorgeous, gorgeous colour. It's so rich. It's one of the, the real old school shades. So I'm going to give that a really good shake. It's been sat on my shelf for quite some time. So you'll probably be able to hear it in my voice. I'm still shaking. I want to make sure that all of those solvents and all of the pigments are thoroughly blended. If they're not thoroughly blended, you might have any inconsistency in colour. Um, you, you might also get a little bit of patchiness as well. So I'm just going to wait for that. It's got a few more seconds left and then we can get our colour on. So like I said, anybody that's commented and maybe Angie hasn't made it to the comment, I'm going to jump back on after and I'll reply to everybody. Okay. If anyone's got any questions, then feel free to drop me a message. You can always private message me. Okay, so this one here, we have our finished enhancement. We're going to go in with colour. Okay. If we didn't want to refine that, we could simply leave it as it leave it as it was and go straight in on top of the inhibition layer okay but i'm gonna add a little bit of color just because i fancy something deep and luxurious so we're gonna use spike if you guys haven't seen this color it is so good so i'm just sealing that free edge taking a bead of product into the center gonna draw a line down the nail and we're just going to really slowly ease our way backwards and keep easing until we are close enough. All it takes is just a real slight rocking motion. Come down that left hand side. And again, let the brush do the work for you. Come down the opposite side. And then we're just going to refine. Pop that into the lamp. So we'll pop that in for one minute on button number 2S. So while that's curing, has anybody got any questions that haven't been answered? So Lynn's asked, I've noticed with the top coat, it gets a few cracks all over the nail. Any ideas why? So Lynn, are you using the top coat over Plexigel as a system? Or are you just using it on top of something like shellac? Because with Plexigel, it's got to be almost like a Plexigel sandwich. Okay. So if you do want to use protective top coat on top of shellac, that is okay. If, and it's a very big if, if you've got Plexigel under it. OK, so whenever you use a harder coating over a softer coating, you may experience cracks. OK, that could be one reason. It could be down to your lamp. It could be your client's hand placement in the lamp. I'd check you using the correct buttons, check you're using the correct settings. Um, but your lamps are really, really big factor. Um, if that hasn't answered your question, Lynn, drop me some pictures. Next time you can you can get some and I'll take a little look at it for you. Feel free to drop me a private message. It's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to go in with my second coat of colour. Again, we're going to seal that edge. And place a bead into the centre. I'm going to ease that back, back down the nail, I'm going to rotate that to the left, and we're going to rotate that to the right, and then we're going to refine. I just love this colour, it's so pretty. Okay, so we're popping that in on 2S. Have a little look, just seeing if there's anything else that I've missed. So does everybody feel like this has been beneficial? So for those of you that are 
natural nail techs. Do you feel like this has helped you? Because I know obviously some of you have used Plexi, but you've maybe not had a chance to get to grips with it. I really hope it's been of value for you. But next week will be a little bit more exciting, I'll be honest with you. We're going to get a little bit creative next week. So if you're joining and you haven't seen the original live, go to the Sweet Square page, go through to the video section, scroll your way down a little bit and you'll see it there. I think it's around about two months ago, but if I'm wrong, I'm sure the team will correct me. And that's really great for starting from scratch, if I'm being honest, you know, working completely from scratch. We talk about forms, how to apply a form, how to get the best from your form, what you're looking for, how to use your builder, how to use your shape, how to use the system. There's so much information on there, guys. If you still feel like you need a little bit more as well, there's a lot of um, free information for you as well. We've got our blog, which is on the Sweet Squared um Sweet Squared website. So go to the blog section, scroll your way through, and there's a lot of free content on there for you. Videos from CND, uh, step by steps, but there's also a lot of information on cnd.com. All you need to do is register in it, and it's all there for you. So I am using my protector top coat on top because, like I said, it's my little plexi gel sandwich, but you absolutely can use any of your CND shellac top coats. Okay? If this was just our usual, CD shellac service, I would not be using this top coat. Put a little bit too much product there, so I'm just going to drain off my brush. I don't want it to be swimming in it. Remember, whenever you're working with top coat, it's your strength and your protection. So you want to make sure that absolutely everywhere is covered. Like I've got a little lump or bump in there, just to get rid of that. So it's really important we've got enough on there, but not too much that it's falling all into the side walls. Okay, so we're going to get that into the lamp on button number three. And then we're going to get the top film removed on these two nails, drop of oil on, and then we're finished. That's going to be us. Let's have a look. See if there's anything else I've missed. Yeah, so the, we've actually just had a comment from Sweet Squared on the, in the chat. So don't forget, guys, we've got Fee on Friday. She's on at 2pm. She's going to be revisiting some of the most popular looks. Um, Fee's amazing. I love, I love watching Fee. Um, I could listen to her all day. Voice is just so Scottish and melty. I just love it. Absolutely love it. Um, so join Fee at 2 o'clock on Friday. And then I'm going to be back next Tuesday. I think I'm on for the next... Four Tuesdays after this evening, 6pm, got something different each week. We've got CD, we've got a little bit of light elegance, um, so it's, it's going to be great. Next week's definitely going to be more creative. I'm hoping to have some pre-prepared content for you as well. Might give you a little bit of inspiration, but also um, we're going to be doing something live. So we're going to be doing an enhancement live from scratch, a little bit longer than the usual length, so that's going to be quite exciting. So I'm just using that Disperse. And whenever you're cleansing your Plexi Gel Protector Top Coat, I would leave it 30 to 60 seconds after it's come out of the lamp for the highest shine, okay? Although the curing's finished, the solvents continue to evaporate afterwards. So you're going to get that bright, super, super bright shine by leaving it that little bit longer. So we're going to finish those with a little drop of solar oil. If your client's skin is extremely dry like mine, you've got the option of cuticle eraser as well. So we'll get that rubbed in. Okay, so I'm just going to spin you round. Bear with me a second. Okay, so just to summarise, we've done rebalance and removal. Okay, like I've said a few times this evening, I would really recommend if you have time to revisit the video that we did around about two months ago. Um, it will cover everything from scratch. If anybody needs any help and support, we're here to support you. OK, that's why we're here. That's why we're doing this is so that you guys go back to the salon feeling confident. So, you know, if that's you practicing at home and you think, I'm not sure I'm doing this right. Drop me a message. OK, drop me a message on Facebook, either on my educator page or my um, my actual Facebook page, which is Victoria Trafford. Drop me a message on there and I'm more than happy to look at that. If anyone's got any questions, uh, don't catch them in the chat when I come back to it, then feel free to message me, okay? We're here to help and support you. And, you know, it's great having a fantastic product, but using it correctly 
is also super, super important. Um, you know, every system varies in application, removal, rebalance, everything's different. So really, really important that we've got all the correct knowledge to get the very, very best from this product. So thank you very much for joining me. Those of you that have stuck around, I hope you have a fabulous week and hopefully I'll see you next Tuesday, 6pm for more transformations. Okay. See you guys soon. Bye.